episode of Eric Waite Whiskey Studies. In April 2019, I went to Texas, visited five distilleries, and then in May 2019, I did a whole month of Texas whiskeys, in which I shared my experience traveling to uh, Texas distilleries. Then I went back to Texas in September 2019, was there for a whole week, and visited more distilleries on the weekends. Uh, so primarily I went to distilleries in the uh, San Antonio and Austin areas in September 2019. All right, so in my last uh, couple of videos, I shared my trip to Alamo Distillery, and then from there I went to Maverick Distillery, which are fairly close uh, together. Uh, so in one trip, you could easily visit both of them. And then about 25 minutes away or so, I went to Ranger Creek Distillery. Now, Ranger Creek Distillery is located in what seems to be um, a business park. So they have their distilling facilities, and in the back they have uh, their aging warehouse and um, looks like a, like a trailer that they use for roasting grain. So uh, I was on my way to Austin, and the time of day in which Ranger Creek would have been open in order to do a tour and stuff, uh, I would have had to wait till late in the day. And I wasn't going to stick around all day to, um, you know, to do a tasting and do a tour and all that. So I thought, well, I can at least pick up a bottle from a liquor store, which I did. I got this. This is the Ranger Creek uh, 36 caliber cast strength Texas straight bourbon whiskey. This is uh, bottle number 567, uh, batch number one. It's bottled at 63.6% alcohol by volume, or 127.2 proof. Uh, well, you know, even though, because I'm not going to wait around all day to go into the distillery, I'll at least go by the place, take a few pictures to put into a video. So I was out in front of the distillery, taking some pictures, and then someone stepped out and said, can I help you? I was like, well, I bought this bottle, and I'm doing these videos. And so I thought I'd take a, a couple pictures to put into the video on YouTube. And the gentleman said, would you like a tour? So I got a private tour of Ranger Creek Distillery and their off hours. They were super hospitable, uh, um, really knowledgeable, able to answer all my questions about the distillery. And it was really, 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 really cool. So I got to do a tour without having to wait around all day. I'm really, really happy about that. And since I was already a customer, you know, I'd already bought a bottle. Uh, they were really, really uh, gracious about, you know, showing me around. All right, so um, here is my short tour. You'll see the inside of the distillery. You'll see um, sort of a, like a gar garage that they use for aging. Uh, you see the roll-up doors, and you'll also see uh, the little warehouse or the little um, tra trailer or what do you want to call it, this big metal uh, container that they use for uh, roasting their grain. Ranger Creek released this cask strength edition of its 36 caliber Texas 
straight bourbon whiskey at the end of 2018. The whiskey was matured for two years and three months and was bottled as a small batch with just a few hand selected barrels. The cast strength 36 caliber bourbon is bottled uncut and unfiltered at 63.3% alcohol by volume or 126.6 proof. Um, interesting, the 36 and the 36 caliber is an inverted number from the ABV 63, but I don't know if that's intentional or not. Oh, by the way, it sells for anywhere between $94 and $100 in the United States. So, as you can see, I've gotten it down below the shoulder, and I have really, really been enjoying this bourbon. Um, it definitely opens up more um, as you get past the shoulder. Gets a little bit of breathing time uh, into it. It, uh, it is a very intense and concentrated and powerful bourbon. Of course, being cat strength, that, that, that's what you'd ex expect. But also having, I would say, classic Texas punch of flavor due to the climate. So on the nose, I get very, 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 very intense uh, caramels, uh, baked corn, or almost if you ever do, if you're camping or something like that and you're gonna put uh, corn um, on a barbecue or uh, on an open fire, you get corn kind of like that. There's like, you get coffee, dark coffee notes, butterscotch. There is a very intense wood character to it, but loads of vanilla, but more like a, um, also a creme brulee, so, you know, uh, that, that toasted top of creme brulee. Some, almost like um, crystallized honey. So it smells very, very sweet on the nose. There's also another character to it, which I don't know how else to describe it, but it smells like Texas. Like there's this sort of uh, Texas character to it uh, that I, you pick up in a lot of other whiskeys from uh, other distilleries. And there's a character to it that reminds me a little bit of Garrison Brothers. All right, on the palate. Wow. Wow. One more. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Wow. All right. Wow. That is so intense. It is in, I mean, the, the volume on the flavor is just Cranked up to 11. It's powerful, but you don't get a huge bite of alcohol. You get a warmth, definitely get a warmth, right? You get that uh, in Kentucky, they say they have the Kentucky hug. On Texas, you get a, a, a Texas kick in the ass. You, you get this, <laughs> or punch in the chest. It, you, you get that warmth in there. But you're not getting that, that biting character that sort of bites the inside of your mouth or that tingling character. I don't get that. It is really silky in terms of texture or smooth. Mouth coating, it has a nice viscosity to it. Uh, almost like a silky oiliness to it. And on the palate, uh, the nose is confirmed. Dark caramels, uh, there's a uh, slight uh, Toasted coffee note, um, butterscotch, intense vanilla, that creme brulee character to it. Um, there's also, and that as I'm talking on the finish, uh, banana pudding. In fact, I should have picked it up on the nose as well. There's uh, it's like a toasted bread character to it as well. And then there's this other character that I'm just going to say, it, it tastes like Texas. So I've been thinking about doing a blind tasting of Kentucky bourbons and Texas bourbons, but I think Texas bourbons, um, some of them have such a this distinct character to them uh, that's going to be hard to describe and yet recognizable as Texas. So this is an absolutely superb 
bourbon. I love this bourbon. It's really complex. It's powerful and yet it doesn't have that huge bite. On a cold winter day, you see I'm wearing this coat here. It's rather cold. It's really nice on a cold day. It's sweet and yet not over the top dessert-like. Uh, it has a really long finish. On the back end, there is a little bit of, of an intense wood character to it as if you said of taking a two by four and biting into that wood. That's the only thing. I wish that wood character was covered up by the other flavors, but there is this moment in which you get this distinctive woody woodiness to it. Um, I get that banana character. What really sticks around is a lot of that banana and vanilla. So it's like a banana vanilla pudding. But it's, other than that, other than that wooden wood trait that really sticks around, it's an absolutely superb bourbon. What am I going to give it in terms of a score? I'm going to go 92 points. If it wasn't for that one, say, wood character to it, I'd probably go up to like 95 points. It's that good. Uh, but I'm going to go with 92 points. I really, really like this whiskey. So. Uh, if you're in Texas, even if you can't get to the distillery, even if you can't get to the distillery, look for this at uh, either the main, major chain, uh, wine and whiskey stores, or look around for it. This is definitely, I would say, a must buy from Texas if you're down there. If you can find this in distribution outside of Texas, which is one of the main challenges, you know, a lot of the distilleries aren't getting outside of Texas, at least yet, hopefully in the future. And they're so small, small production, you know, they're all sold and bought and consumed right there in Texas as well. Um, but hopefully uh, you can get a bottle of this because I highly, highly, highly recommend it. All right, that's it for uh, this review. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social network channels. And until next time, Cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.